She's a Mona Lisa. Everyone's lining up to see her. Right, so hello, my name is Jade She's Rose. Today I thought I would make this video to just make it easier, simpler, faster. For people who are just like when I was starting out, you know, you just want to feel a little bit better. You want to be a little bit leaner or maybe a lot a bit leaner. You do not have to sit here looking for the perfect workout plan or the perfect diet plan. This is not what this video is about. These little slight lifestyle changes together just make a big difference in the end. But the first one is wearing comfortable shoes. If you know the shoes do not allow for movement, then Come on, you're not gonna really get in that exercise. I'm telling you the day-to-day -day little average movements and things that you do that you don't even think about, those add up so much. When I first started losing weight, right, I did not go to the gym. I did not even intentionally exercise. You know, walking should always be an option, right? And if you don't have in your mind that that's an option, you're not gonna move much you're not gonna lose weight. There was a time though with me, I used to wear boots everywhere. I used to wear heels all the time, like heeled boots, you know? They look, they make your outfit look great, right? But then you have to find some like more comfortable shoes as well that you can style with your outfits. Exhibit A, these are Doc Martens. Really comfortable Doc Martens. There are Doc Martens that are not so comfortable. These are more of the stretchy kind of leather and then there is the really hard leather that just does not budge. Exhibit B, these are a sandal with no support at the back or at the front. These are a sandal with support at the back, at the front, they have like a little strap at the front. Even like trainers, like you see a chunky trainer and you think, oh, that must be really comfortable to walk in. No, remember the feelers, they were really popular but actually really an uncomfortable shoe. The new balance trainers are so much more comfy and yeah, a much better option. Exhibit C, this has got the more stretchy lever. This is gonna be something that is a little bit more comfortable, really, really a solid boot. This one is just hard to walk in. <laughs> but in general, you have to really think of your own feet, right? And your own shoes. What is comfortable for you might not be comfortable for me. Having fun, going out, doing things, you know? You know why they call it winter weight? It's because you're sitting at home doing nothing and yep, the weight is just packing on, you're eating food. Have you ever like followed a YouTuber and as they've gotten bigger and bigger, they've literally physically gotten a bit bigger and it's because they're probably sitting in their house turning out content, right? Eating, filming eating, filming, and when they're filming, they're sitting down. That's, today, the last two videos I've been sitting down, today I said, no, 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 no more, I'm standing. If you're just bored of eating, you're just eating and eating for the sake of eating, and then you're not exercising, you're not moving and wondering why you're putting on a lot of weight, like, I don't know what to tell you. No, I do know what to tell you. You need to go out, you need to have fun, live life, you know? Now it's summer as well, you know? The, well, here it's summer. There are more options for things to do. You can go to the park, you can go to events, there are festivals. The other day I went to this vegan nights festival in London and it was so fun, so good. Honestly, it's gonna make you happier. It's gonna distract you from just sitting around eating all day. I'm not now saying like you have to be super extroverted, right? You can be an introvert. You can go to the park, right? You can go even by yourself to the park, have a walk, enjoy the nature, and yeah, do something else. This one is similar to the shoes thing, right? Your bags, like, oh, I used to carry everything in my bag. I think like I, I was like kind of modeled after my mom. My mom loves a handbag. My mom loves like stuff, handbag, everything that could be or might be useful, you know? And when you're carrying like a really heavy bag, you're just not gonna be in the mood to walk a lot. You're not gonna be in the mood to actually be active in general. Unless it's something like easy, maybe like a backpack, but if it's like a handbag, a really stuffed handbag, it's just, yeah, it's not helpful. My third tip is about cereal or just in general, starting off with a nutritious breakfast. I used to eat cereal every day. Even in my old videos I used to talk about because I loved cereal, right? I used to eat it all day every day and that is the problem, right? I would start off with the cereal and think, okay, let me have another bowl and another bowl. And cereal to me nowadays, I just think of it as cardboard with milk, you know? I'm so happy that I got rid of that habit and that kind of 
it's just something I did every single morning. Nowadays, I have a nice breakfast bowl with some fruit. I have blueberries, I have strawberries, I have peaches. It's not necessarily the calories of the meal and the exact, you know, food there and blah, blah, blah. It's just more setting you up for the rest of the day. But when I would start my day with cereal, I would keep going with the most processed options that I could get. But now that I start my day with like, you know, a whole real meal, it just puts me in the mood to kind of choose the best kind of options for the rest of the day. And on top of that also, if we're going deeper into nutrition wise, it's probably maybe the same amount of calories. I don't know, it could be depending on how much you eat, right? But the way that your body processes the food is gonna be different. Calories definitely do matter, but let's say if something is similar amount of calories, I would always go for the less processed option or the option that just seems like it has more nutritional value. Next thing is hair, because this, people are gonna think this is a bit strange, but for, no, I think people are gonna to relate to this. For a very, very long time, the reason why I did not work out, did not exercise, and did not want to exercise is because I straightened my hair and I didn't want it to revert back and start curling up again. And I feel like all of my, afro haired, curly haired, textured haired girls can relate to this. It is the most annoying thing when you've just gotten your hair done and you start like sweating even just a little bit and then suddenly it goes back. Now, something that saved me was taking a scarf like this and literally wrapping it around my head right in the front here and just wrapping it all the way around and then going to work out. Because what it does is it like compresses the hair and keeps it straight. You might sweat or whatever, but when you leave and then it dries, you can take it off and it will still be straight. And I can't speak for everyone because I don't know how much everyone sweats, right? But usually you sweat in the front here anyway, like it's more towards your forehead rather than more in the middle of your head. So that just kind of, it stops you your hair from reverting. Really good tip. And then also using some kind of serum that stops your hair from reverting as well. So you put the serum on before you straighten your hair. There are loads of different ones. I had an amazing one. It was called, it was from the brand Brazilian New Nat keratin something something. I don't know if they sell it anymore because I ran out and I couldn't find it and obviously I don't straighten my hair anymore. But on TikTok I've been seeing loads of people using the Dream Coat Color Wow for curly hair. I saw it and I thought oh I would love to buy this because I know some of my subscribers have curly hair, I know some of you have afro hair and I know that you'll want to know whether it works. However obviously I can't use it right now, so I didn't buy it. But if anyone has used it, definitely let me know. Maybe leave in the comments. And even if you haven't used that product, any other products that you can recommend that keep your hair from reverting, from humidity, from sweat, anything like that. That kind of product isn't gonna like completely stop it, right? But it does help. Going to bed at the same time every day, waking up at the same time every day, your sleep is so important. We all know if you're stressed or you're not sleeping well, it really, really can affect your weight. And obviously there are many reasons why someone might not be sleeping well. Some people have depression, you know, and depression, stress, anxiety can really affect your sleep. So definitely go to your doctor, talk about those things with your doctor, or just in general doing things to kind of get to that root problem will really help. Or if you're just someone who just sleeps late, you know, or, you know, forgets that you need a bit of extra time before you go to sleep to actually go to sleep. And I know how long that takes me. I know how long it takes me to unwind. I know that I'm gonna do a little bit of journaling before I go to bed. So yeah, you've gotta just kind of factor all of those things in. Have limits on alcohol, and I mean strict limits. I always say like, don't be too strict with yourself with food and blah, blah, blah. But when it comes to alcohol, I do think you kind of have to be a little bit strict with yourself. If you are someone who likes to drink a lot or is in situations where there is a lot of alcohol all the time. Let's say you work at a bar. Let's say you are someone who gets invited to a lot of events where there is a lot of alcohol. If you're drinking every day, every other day, very regularly, honestly, this is probably the number one tip. I mean, if you were to slash like in half how much you drink, it's, it's just gonna be amazing. You will see the results so fast. Literally, whether it's a limit, like you only drink I don't know, two or three drinks, or if it's like a limit as in how many days a week you do actually drink, that's what I do. I will never go over two days of drinking in the week. If you're a glass of wine every night type of gal, maybe every other night, maybe just a couple nights a week, pick one vegetable, one fruit, and keep them in your fridge 
all the time without fail and make it very accessible. If it's strawberries, cut off the stalks, prep them all. If it's broccoli, cut it up, prep it all. If you run out, straight away, stock up. If you run out again, straight away, stock it up. And exactly the way you always have the option of crisps in the cupboard, of chocolates in the cupboard, of cookies in the cupboard. You need to always have the option of the healthy option and make it a non-negotiable. Not a non-negotiable that you have to eat it, but a non-negotiable that it is an option and it is available. And also when it comes to keeping those less healthy options in your house, right? I always say don't keep sweets in your house, but I think I'm saying it from my own po point of view, from my own experience, right? Because I can go very overboard with the sweets. But I just know that that is a trigger food to me. And I think that you need to think about what are your trigger foods. When I say trigger foods, I mean like, what foods do you eat and they want more and more and more? What are like, just basically, what are things that basically just encourage you to overeat? Because the less you eat, the less calories it's gonna be. I think that portion control is the most effective way of losing weight. Even over like substituting, I think portion control is the most effective. So you need to really think about what kind of foods are making you eat more and more and more, even past the point of hunger. So for me, that's cookies, right? If I keep cookies in my house, the likelihood that I finish the packet is high. If I buy a bar of chocolate, like a large kind of, I don't know, you know, Lindor bar, I'm most likely gonna finish more than I wanted to or expected to. The only thing that I don't do this with, I don't do it with ice cream, even though a lot of people do. So I can actually buy like a Ben & Jerry's ice cream, have some, put it in the fridge, not think about it. Maybe, I don't know, three weeks later, I might come back to it. <laughs> Honestly, for me, it's like nothing, but I know a lot of people, for them, it's a lot. So yeah, just don't keep it in your house. Eat it when you're out. Like when you go to the cinema, they always have the little like Ben & Jerry stand and they give you it in the scoop and you can enjoy that. Or, you know, even when you're on holiday, you always see like little ice cream stands. I love pan au chocolats, right? In my mom's house, she always has them in her house. I literally, I'm like, oh my God, no, because I can eat, well, not that many actually, but I just prefer not to keep them in my house because they're just so easy to eat. I will go to the bakery and grab a pan au chocolat and enjoy. Speaking of enjoy, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know there are a lot of things that you might see where you think, oh, they're so perfect. They're doing everything so perfectly and I need to be super perfect as well, but it's not about that. Like, you know, I grew up eating, you know, McDonald's all the time and thinking nothing of it and not really knowing what had sugar in it and what didn't and not knowing, you know, all these, you know, complicated kind of nutrition things that people are always talking about online. And I was still able to lose weight. I was still able to get in shape. I was still able to get signed to a modeling agency, you know? And that's even though I started out much bigger and not knowing a thing. I wish you the best of luck on your journey. If you wanna watch another video like this, definitely watch this video. Please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and yeah, I'll see you in the next video.